All right, in this video, we're going to look at lesson 6-5 on the front of the green page, and then 6 6 lesson 6-6 six, six is on the back of the green page. All right, so if you have a question number one, so let's look at how we expand this out. So how many different properties of logarithms? You remember, you can get those on your from your notes, and you can also put that on your note sheet for the test. But when we break this up, this will be the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of y plus the natural log of z cubed. And remember, if we have any exponents, those exponents, we'd move out in front of the logarithm. So in this case, your final answer would be 2 times the natural log of x plus the natural log of y plus 3 times the natural log of z. So that would be completely simplified. So make sure that you also take care of the exponents, so don't just stop with what I had in purple. All right, let's look at number 2. So number 2. We have log base 5 of four, the quantity 4 divided by x squared. So let's first separate that out. So we're with division. We separate that as two separate logarithms. We're going to use subtraction. So we log base 5 of 4 minus log base 5 of x, like this, x squared. So remember that square is an exponent that gets moved in, out in front of the log. The 4 doesn't have an exponent, so we'll just leave it as it is. So we just say log base 5 of 4. With or without parentheses, it really doesn't matter. Minus, whoops, let's put that exponent in front. So it'll be 2 times log base 5 of x. And that would be completely simplified. So again, make sure that if there's an exponent that you move it out in front. Otherwise, you'll lose points in the test. All right, now we're going to work our way backwards. So now they have it written as two separate logarithms. And so we're going to write it as a single logarithm. So when we go backwards, we do the process also backwards. And so... This 7, we're going to start by putting it as an exponent. So I have log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y to the 7th power. And now we're going to combine this as a single logarithm. Since we're subtracting, we're going to divide the values. So it be x divided by y to the 7th. So again, you just, your final answer should just have a single logarithm. It shouldn't be log base 2 of x divided by log base 2 of y to the 7th. That is wrong. It's the values that we take and divide. All right, simplify inside the parentheses first. So I see here that we're adding those two numbers. We'd have x, oops, what am I doing there? So it'd be x times y, and since we're subtracting log of w as a single logarithm, it would be x times y divided by w. And now we can apply that exponent. That exponent would go... Um, or that one half would be an exponent, so it'd go with all of that. So your answer would be log x times y divided by w raised to the one half power. That would be your final answer for that one. So that is the uh, front side of the green page for lesson 6.5. Let's look at the back side for lesson 6.6. All right, so this one I noticed that we have... Um, two bases with exponents. So what I would encourage you to do is try to get to common bases. Now with the six, there's no other number that I can change six to to have a base with an exponent. Like two cubed is eight, two cubed is not six. So, and three squared is nine, three squared is not six. We so can multiply the base and the exponent. So six, I can't do anything with. So again, my goal is to get a common base here. But 216, if you play around with that a little bit, now, I don't expect you to have this memorized, but you could play around with 6 with different exponents. So we know 6 squared is 36, but 6 cubed is 216. Now this 3, we're going to distribute that to those other values. Remember our rules for exponents, where we have a power raised to a power. So the left side, that's going to stay the way it is for right now. The right side, when you distribute the 3 through, we get, whoops, what am I doing? That'd be plus 9. We distribute the 3 through, we get 6x plus 9. So now remember, we have these two bases are the same. So now I'm not going to just get rid of these 6s. It's just that I'm going I'm to ignore them because we're trying to get these two sides to be equivalent to each other. So now that we know that the bases are equivalent to each other, now let's figure out what x would have to be so the exponents would be equivalent to each other. So again, we're just focusing on the exponents now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides. 
And let's just go ahead and get rid of that 9 as well. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So we have negative 15 equals 5x. If I divide both sides by 5, I get x equals negative 3. We can always check. Again, I would check with what I did here in purple just to make sure that we have the right answer. So if I put three in, negative 3 in for x, we'd have negative 3 minus 6. So we'd have negative 9. So 6 to the negative 9 power would be the first part. And the second part, 6 times negative 3 is negative 18, plus 9 is also an exponent of negative 9. So we'd end up with 6 to the negative 9 power and on the left side and on the right. That's how you know that you've done it correctly. All right, so this one, remember, we can do this in one of two, technically three ways. And I'll talk about two of them. One of the ways would be to just change the form it's in. Our base is 3. Our value is 4. Our exponent is 2x minus 3. Now you could do the change of base theorem on your calculator, or like I said, some of your calculators will do this on its own. But in either case, we would end up with 1.262 equals 2x minus 3. And I'll talk more about how to do the change of base theorem in a second when we look at the other method. All right, now I'd add 3 to both sides and divide by 2. And you get 2.13 approximately. Is your value for x. Now, or there's this other method. The other method is just to take the log of both sides. Now, if I take the log of both sides, I like to do it this way. Because we would have an exponent of 2x minus 3, but I know that exponent I'm going to move out in front. So I just like to do two things at once. I'll put that exponent out in front when we write down the log of 3. Let's make sure to also take the log of the right, so we'd have log of 4. So now to solve this, we want to get rid of the log of 3 on the left side, so I'm going to divide it on both sides. So log of 4 divided by log of 3, that's what we would have done here. So if you're wondering how I got from log base 3 of 4 to 1.262, it was by using the change of base theorem. So if you do that on your calculator, log of 4 divided by log of 3, that is the change of base. That's also what we have here. So that means that we're going to end up with the same solutions. We'd end up with... 4.262, I would add 3, divide by 2, you get 2.13 is your answer. So you could use either method of your choice, it doesn't matter to me which one, as long as you show your work. The only other method that we could use is at the beginning here we would have gotten the same answer if instead of doing the log of both sides, instead if I had taken the natural log of both sides. you get the same answer in the long run. So you end up even with 4.262 there. So it looks different, but it's going to give you the same value. All right, let's look at this last problem. So this one, I see that the log and the bases are the same. So we can just focus on our values. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x equals 4x minus 8. because so I want to figure out what number we'd have to put in for x for both values to be the same. So we already have the log with the bases being the same, so we just need the values to be the same on both sides. So now this is a quadratic, so we want to get everything on one side of the equation, everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So 2x minus 4x is negative 6x. I'm going to add 8 to both sides, so I get plus 8, 0. Now we're going to factor this. when I do that, we would try to find two numbers that multiply together to be 8, positive 8, that add together to be negative 6. So hopefully you get negative 4 and negative 2, because negative 4 times negative 2, sure enough, is positive 8, and negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. When I solve each of these for x, we get two solutions, 4 and 2. Now, before we say these are final answers, we need to check to see that they actually work. So we need to check for extraneous solutions, and by extraneous, we want to make sure that if we take the log of a negative number, that's not possible. If I take the natural log of a negative number, that's also not possible. So that's how we identify our extraneous solutions, is if we end up with the log of a negative number. So if I put 4 in there for x, on the left side, 4 squared is 16. And then if I put 4 in here for x, I'd have negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So 16 minus 8 is 8. And the left side, if I put that in there, 
If I put, again, if I put 4 in here for, eight, for x, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 8 is also 8. And I could take the log of 8. That's not a negative number. So that one checks out. So now let's put 2 in here for x. So 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 times 2 is also 4. So 4 minus 4 ends up with 0. And now if I put 2 in here for x on the, on the right side, so 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0. Now if you try to take the log of, so if you're on your calculator, if you try to take the log of 0, you're going to get domain error. You might say, well, it's a log base 2 of 0. It doesn't matter because if we use a change of base theorem, we take log of 0 divided by log of 2. It does not work. So that means this is an extraneous solution. So in other words, when I said earlier, not only can we not have a negative number, but we also can't have 0. If we do, we get an extraneous solution. So x equals 4 would be our only answer for number 3. So hopefully that answers all your questions from the green section in Lesson 6.6, .6, and good luck as you continue to prepare for the test.